Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. An average user spends about 190 minutes on mobile phones every day. You and I know it better. We spend a lot of time on our mobile phones. Since we're talking about mobile phones, let's talk about apps. When people come here on an app, onto your, onto your app, they're here to do something. Whatever they wanted to do, why can't we just make it easy for them? If they're here to book a cab, let's make it easy for them. If they're here to buy some groceries, let's make it easy for them. Well, if they're here to book some tickets, let's make it easy for them. When I say let's make it easy for them, let's shorten the path that they would have to take to do whatever they have come to do on your website, which is they have come here to buy something from you or book something from you. Why can't we shorten the path? That's exactly the concept, deep linking. Now, what is deep linking is something that we would be talking about in just a few seconds. But before that, let me give you an example. Imagine you have an app and you would want to promote the app to encourage people to install it on their mobile devices. Somebody told you YouTube ads is the best way to go. So you decided, let's give YouTube a try. And you wanted to let people know that you have an app that they can install. So you decided to run YouTube ads. There are two obstacles. You need to cross two levels where people can skip installing your app. The first level is, well, let me explain it on the screen. That's easy. All right. So what, what you see on the screen is I have a mobile app here. And I want to install the app by running YouTube ads. When I'm running YouTube ads, when my ads actually run, there is a slot or there is a way where they can skip the ads. Now that is the first level of skip or the obstacle that you would have to cross. The second, even if they don't skip the ad and they decided to go to your website and install the app, so they click on the ad and they have arrived on your install page of the website. Now they can or they may, they may or they may not install the app. So that's the level where they can skip for the second time. So in order for a successful install to happen, you need to navigate these hurdles where people can skip. Either they can skip the ad and forget about you forever, or they come to your install page, but they think it's a cumbersome process and they don't want to do it now. So they delay or procrastinate installing your app. Now, the whole point here is, guys, why do you want to give them the opportunity when you can make it even better or make it easier for them to go ahead and just install your app, right? Now, there are two situations here. A situation where people do not have the app installed yet. The second instance is when people have already installed the app and you're promoting an ad to them. Now imagine you're selling shoes online and there is an ad which is running where people are interested in the ad and they click on the ad. Where do you send them? Do you send them to the page where, because you're not sure if the, the user has installed the app or not, right? So what's what, what makes sense? The only way that makes sense is to send them to a web page where they have they see the install option, right? Now, if they don't have the app installed, they can go ahead and install the app. But if they already have the app installed, they will open the app and they can go ahead and search for your product and buy it. This is an increasingly cumbersome process for them to go ahead and do what you want them to do at this point in time. So what makes sense is a system where if they have the app installed, the exact shoe that they wanted to buy should open up in the app or if they don't have the app installed, they should be redirected to a page where they can go ahead and install the app when they click on the ad. Now, this dynamic linking of pages, depending upon what the user has or what the user does not have, is something called as deep linking. Now, deep linking is such an incredible process in making sure that you get as many conversions as possible, you reduce the churn rate, you reduce drop-offs where people really delay in installing your app, and this is such an interesting concept. All you need to do is get some deep link generators and generate deep links for your mobile apps, depending upon what you would want to promote and when you would want to promote, and then get it ahead, get it done from there. Now, why do we need deep links? Deep, now, why do we need deep linking? We need deep linking for specifically three reasons. One, it has a better user experience. It does provide users with a better experience overall. No questions there. And the second reason you should go ahead and uh, get and the second reason you should get the deep linking in place is because it helps you in retargeting. It helps you in picking up things from where the users left off. Somebody has left off from the shoes page on your app. Now, if remarketing with deep linking enables you to target them right from where they left off. The third reason is because there is a lot of personalization that is possible with remarketing ads. And because we're talking about app, because you already have the details of the user, it makes it very easy to personalize by sending them directly to the page that you would want them to go. And that will give you a window of opportunity where your, convers where your conversions are optimized now. So these are the three reasons specifically. There are a lot of other reasons. There are a lot more reasons for you to go ahead and use deep linking for, but primarily these are the three things 
which somebody should use deep linking if you're dealing with mobile apps. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is when I say deep linking, is it okay if I have a deep link generator and I can generate a deep link or your software guy will do it for you or your coding guy or your tech team will do it for you. Now, is it enough? I, I, I generate a deep link and I use it in my ad URLs. Is that enough? And where can I use the deep link is the next big question. Deep links can be used just like your URLs in any of the ways that you're marketing or promoting right now. It can be used on your social media platforms. It can be used on your Instagram posts. It can be used on your Facebook posts. It can be used on your YouTube URLs. It could be used on your blogs. It could be used on your ads. It could be used on pretty much everywhere. Your deep link URLs or your deep links can be used pretty much everywhere when it comes to promoting your, pro your app. And the only goal that the deep linking is doing is getting people from across all sources that you are promoting or you're present on the web onto, the, onto your app. That's the only thing deep linking is doing. And to go to the exact page that you would want them to go on your app, not just the home page of the app. Now, doesn't sound so complicated. We also know that why it is helpful and we also know that why someone should go ahead and get deep links generated today. But there are also something that you need to remember. There are three kinds of deep links. One is a standard deep link, which is a basic deep link where people will go to the exact same page if they have the app installed. If they don't have the app installed, they will go back automatically to the page where they can go ahead and install the app. Or in some cases, it throws an error message saying that the page is invalid. This is a standard deep linking. Now, the second sort of deep linking that we have is called as a deferred deep link. Now, deferred deep linking is very interesting because people see an ad, they click on the ad, they go to your page. They go to the product if they already have the app installed. If they do not have the app installed, they will be redirected to the page where they can download the app from, whether it's a Play Store or an App Store. Now, this is where it gets interesting with the deferred deep links. Once they install the app, because they did not have the app installed, they had clicked on the ad, they have come to your uh, app page where they can install it because they don't have the app installed. After they install the app, they will directly go to the page where you wanted them to go. That's the advantage that deferred deep links have. While a basic standard deep link can only take them to the page if they have already, if they have installed the app already. If they don't have the app installed, they will be either taken back to the page where they can install it and there ends the matter or it shows a uh, or it throws an error message. The third sort of deep links that we have are called as the contextual deep links where somebody clicks on an ad. If they have the app installed, they will go to the product page exactly to the page that you would want, uh, you would have wanted them to go. If they do not have the app installed, they can come back. And along with that, it can also you can also tag certain parameters like their details, the page they were upon, where the source that they're coming from. You can get all the tracking pieces of information that you can add use for attributing where the user came from in a more efficient and a wholesome manner or in a holistic manner. So this is how deep linking works. And I strongly urge everybody who is dealing with any sort of app promotions or app marketing to go ahead and generate deep links for your product or service. Now, I hope this is clear and the next session, and, and there's also this, there's also a part two to this session, maybe probably coming down next week, where we would be talking about how attribution works when you're talking about deep linking and how do you attribute those clicks to the, to the conversions to the right clicks so that you get a clear picture of what got you the conversion. Thank you so much. My name is Casey. Until next time, ciao.